Good morning. Hi guys, what's up? Dr. Greeny here. So thank you guys for hopping on doing skincare Q&A brunch this morning. So it's uh, good to have you guys here. It's uh, once again been a little while since we did a live. I am on YouTube. Um, so if the questions roll in a little too rapidly on here and I miss them, YouTube is always a slower chat and I'll definitely pick up uh, your questions on there. So feel free to just check out Swollen D Skincare and um, drop any questions you got. I hope you guys have had a real nice weekend. I know I've had a nice relaxing one. So again, thank you guys for being here. So yeah, I uh, posted that video about retinoids yesterday. It seems like maybe people like the out, outside shots. Hey, what's up guys? Hi, Sh Shivana. Is any permanent fillers for acne scars? So not really great permanent ones. Sometimes people, um, if you have like these pitted out acne scars, you can actually have um, them actually like kind of almost cut out and sutured up and get you a better uh, result. So that would be one thing to do, but not really any great permanent fillers that are going to last. So, yeah. So where's everybody else coming in from today? And make sure if you're here, you can, you can, uh, tap on that like the more likes that, that apparently that are put in the wider this gets distributed to people on TikTok. so if you guys are here if you like my videos if you're going to ask some questions feel free to hit some likes uh, and get the likes flowing in because that's really what makes a huge difference on reaching a bunch of people um, the more people here the more um, you know the more people that are here the, the more questions are going to get asked and then everybody can learn more so even if you don't have questions tap the likes and get those flowing in and get some more people in here that will ask some questions so <clears throat> hey there darren good to see you buddy uh new mexico taylor's coming in from we got london england so we're definitely worldwide today seattle good morning from houston great state of texas awesome lizzie thanks for popping in so and thank you hey crystal what's up i hope you had a great great uh time last night um where did you guys go <clears throat> And we got Canada, San Francisco, so very good. So thank you guys, it's awesome. And thank, uh, thank you to the people that are on YouTube as well. Again, feel free to ask questions on either one. We got Russia, Illinois, so Illinois from my home state. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. We got we're drumming up some pretty good likes, so let's keep that going. Let's hit some more likes and uh, get this out to more people. So you guys are awesome. You really got them flowing in. So appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you cryptocurrency just logged in what's up <clears throat> if i didn't know any better that would be aaron hansen uh morning from northern ontario canada canada such a great country awesome bon bon so good to have you guys and seattle i haven't been out of seattle in a while um that was the first trip i took uh was to seattle after i got back from iraq so and we got a derm question how to treat little black spots on the face for fast results so the question is, what are what's causing the black spots, right? Um, there's a lot of different things that can cause it. The most common thing are maybe like the black spots that you see on your nose or something. So some people call them blackheads, some people call them sebaceous filaments. Um, but either way, uh, about the best way to treat that is with a good, what we call a keratolytic um, cleanser. So that's gonna be like salicylic acid. And salicylic acid basically kind of can dissolve into oily substances like the sebaceous filaments and plugged oil glands and help kind of clear those out. Not everybody likes it, but I really like using um, also a mechanical cleansing brush like the silicone ones from Foreo um, or uh, there's one called from Pepe. So those are really, really good. Um, and that would be the, about the best way to get fast results without over irritating your skin. So for preventing those, what you want to do is want to be using a, a retinoid, which is what I did my last video on, uh, adapalene is about the best one you can get over the counter. That's going to help prevent those pores from becoming blocked, and that that um, make a, uh, that'll do good for you. So, uh, treat blemish. So, uh, Minda, the best way to treat blemishes is prevent them in the first place. Um, but if you already have a blemish, then you want to use something like a spot treatment. I did one recently on acne-free benzoyl peroxide. That would be a good one that can be used one to three times a day. Um, another great option is um, there's a lot of like sulfur-based spot treatments or salicylic acid-based spot treatments from Inky List or from La Roche-Posay. Any of those are good. But again, spot treating isn't really the is isn't really going to get you your best skin. You want to make sure you're doing good skincare every day to help prevent that from happening. So 
from Jamaica, from Ireland, Northern Ontario. So he said, so good deal. I have a question about Accutane. Can I eat yogurt with it instead of a full meal? So it depends if it's fat free yogurt, um, then it's probably not going to be good enough. Um, Lucy is asking a question about, um, Accutane, which Accutane is one of the best treatments that there is for acne. It's an, it's the only acne treatment that can actually cure acne permanently. So, um, you know, when it, when someone comes in with bad acne, that's scarring, that is frustrating and painful to them. Dermatologists put a person on Accutane, especially if they failed a lot of other therapies. The reason she's asking about eating it with a meal is not necessarily because it upset your, upset your stomach or something like antibiotics do, but she's asking that because basically Accutane needs to be eaten with some fat because that helps the absorption of it. So if you're eating it, if you're taking your Accutane with just a glass of water, you're not getting the best result from it. You want to have a little bit of fat in your food, but it's also important to maintain a balanced diet throughout that time because one of the most common things we see with people on Accutane is some changes in their lab values, mainly their lipids, cholesterol and things. So you still want to eat a healthy diet. Um, you want to eat a healthy diet and, um, and then eat it with a little bit of fat. So um, so this is the kind of questions that we're going to deal with today. We're going to talk about glow. We're going to talk about anti-aging. We're going to talk about wrinkles. We're going to talk about dark spots. I'm happy to help answer any of those questions. So if you feel like that's going to be helpful and you think it would help some other people, smash the like, tap it, give it like, if you're going to do like 50 likes, then just do hundred likes. So just get the likes rolling in and I'm going to answer these questions. I'm going to be here with you guys for like an hour. So the more people we can reach in this hour, it's awesome. So make sure to hit that like and we'll get it going. So, and thank you for sending the flowers. Let's see, all the way from the Philippines. Thank you guys for the um, follows, uh, by the way, as well. So let's see, top products for glowing skin. If I had to pick, I would say vitamin C um, and um, your retinoids like adapalene. So those are the really good ones. Another great way to get a glow and look dewy and hydrated is hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acids in a bunch of different moisturizers and topical skin products. And what those do is they allow um, some water to be kind of bound to the skin and, um, and it creates a nice dewy hydrated look. What happens when you stop using tretinoin after many months of using it? So you start, you start to lose the anti-aging benefit of it. If you're prone to acne and you haven't like kind of grown out of your acne, then, um, you know, your acne can certainly come back because tretinoin is not a cure for acne. It's a treatment for acne. Darren, thanks for the flower. Appreciate it. Um, sunspots and freckles. How do we treat it? I tried IPL and microneedling. It didn't work. So sunscreen every single day is the most important thing you can do because we do know freckles get darker when it's exposed to the sun. So there's that. And then maybe if you haven't tried facial peels, you could do that. I've done some facial peels with TCA on some people that had trouble with freckles and dark spots. And as long as it's done by an expert and it's not overdone, then uh, that can that can potentially help too. I've known some people that I've done IPL on that had uh, got a much better result actually with peels. Um, so is there um, a correlation between dust mite allergy and snail mucin sensitivity? So I sure hope the snail, snail mucin hasn't failed you, Anna, but um, I, not that I know of, but that's a pretty niche question. Um, there might be something out there. It's kind of interesting you're asking. I'd love to hear more about it, but um, yeah, that's uh, I, not that I know of. I have a problem in my face. Also, sometimes it'll itch around my nose area. First thing I would say is just switch to good gentle skincare. So avoid fragrances, you know, use products like Vanacream. Vanacream is very gentle and that would be a good way to, to go in, uh, to do that. So daughter has psoriasis, scalp treatments don't seem to be helping any suggestions. So there's a lot of really good medicines at the dermatologist. I mean, the baseline kind of treatment for, um, for psoriasis really is going to be topical steroids and such. So that's what we're usually going to prescribe in the office. So that's real important. But now there are more treatments approved even for kiddos um, that can be very helpful at treating psoriasis because psoriasis is a chronic condition. It doesn't tend to, you know, can't treat it and make it go away. So um, some of those treatments are out there and I would talk to your dermatologist. A couple of the over-the-counter things that can help people are ketoconazole or nizoral shampoo. Uh, Neutrogena T-gel um, does not smell good, but it can help with that. So New York, Arizona, what's up guys? Thank you for hitting those likes and getting this out to people. Really appreciate it. Don't be shy about the likes. It helps us reach a bunch more people. So, and I, I can already tell we're reaching a ton of people. I mean, you got people all over the world help, 
help get everybody their best skin today. Dark spots um, from scars in the legs, falling as a kid, any ideas? So if they've been there since you're a kid, you're probably not gonna have a whole lot of great success. Bon Bon, thanks for all the flowers. Um, also, you know, you've had them your whole life, so it, it's probably gonna be pretty hard to get rid of those. Um, you can use something along the lines of, um, you know, faded by topicals or ambi cream, but I would have a pretty like limited expectation for how well it's gonna help um, that overall. N Nepal um, checking in and then got some melasma and acne. So the good news is, you know, acne treatment like adapalene or tretinoin can help both of those problems. But the biggest thing is you have to be using sunscreen every single day. If you have like one bad sun exposure, um, you know, over time, um, you know, just one day, your melasma is gonna kind of reset and come back. So that's the biggest thing you can do. But for most people, we're using prescription products for them. So my hair used to be so long ever since I noticed the the bump my hair is getting shorter so i missed the first part of that um you know hair thinning with aging can certainly occur um you know stress and things like that can be related to aging if you have any health problems it can be related to or sorry with hair loss um so i would see someone hair is actually pretty complicated so i would see a dermatologist in person to make sure you get a good diagnosis of what's going on i use um tretinoin would it be okay if i switched to occ retinol like adapalene you can if you feel like that's cheaper for you or it's easier for you to do. Um, Adapalene probably isn't quite as potent, but um, you know you're still going to get those benefits. So for I'd say if you don't have tretinoin, if you don't have tretinoin, then um, you know Adapalene is a good alternative. Um, but if you have tretinoin, I would keep that up. So age spots, so lasers can take care of those. Um, some topical creams can help treat those too. Tyler is asking that nine and a half. Dylan, do you think azelaic acid with Retin-A is a good idea? And what cleanser should I use, Darren? So good question, Darren. I think that you can go and do those both together, no problem. Um, azelaic acid pairs pretty nicely with everything. It can irritate some people's skin though, so um, so I would just be aware of that because you're putting two things that could potentially irritate your skin on there. Products for eczema. Some of my favorite ones are ointment-based, like Aquaphor, Eucer, and Cerave. Um, and then if you can't tolerate the ointments, then do the creams. Best time to do any of those moisturizers or treating eczema, even if you're using prescription medicines, is pretty much right after you get out of the shower, your skin's still a little bit damp, just pat dry it, put on your um, treatment. So um, we got um, a question on, on YouTube. If you guys don't follow me on YouTube, I'm, I'm Swole MD Skincare on YouTube, and I do longer videos once every week or so, and um, I'd love for to have your support over there, but we got a question from YouTube that's talking about tea tree oil for acne so the important thing to know about tea tree oil um, and sorry for the delay and getting back to your question but the important thing to know about tea tree oil is that it can be an allergen for some people but it is anti-inflammatory so it's a mixed bag it's just like fragrance like some people have no trouble with fragrance in their products they don't have any allergies um, to it and they do just fine same thing can go for tea tree oil I know some people that live you know swear by it and they love it um, and my fiance included uh, but it can be an allergen for some people. So most dermatologists, if you came in, probably wouldn't recommend it necessarily. But um, yeah, so that's a good question there. Uh, peeling around the nose, I would use good gentle um, moisturizers like Vanicream. Ordinary vitamin C cream. So uh, Young, Young Bay, uh, thanks so much for the, the nice uh, comments, by the way. Uh, ordinary vitamin C cream. I actually use the 23%, which is super strong. I used it for months and I think I had some of the best skin that I had ever had. Um, but now I've kind of switched to doing something a little bit more gentle. I think the ordinary 23% vitamin C is a nice option for people that are looking for something really affordable. But now you can even find very affordable products from companies like Maylove for like, you know, 20 or 30 bucks. And, um, and it does just fine. So, okay, guys. Thank you so much for all you being here. If, if, if these things are helping you, please hit some likes. Let's get this out to more people. Um, we're at about 4,600 likes. I'd love to get up to like 10,000. So smash the likes. If it helped you at all, ask your questions. I'm trying to go through them one by one. So I want to get to everybody's. So thank you guys so much for watching. And um, this is exciting to do a good skincare Q&A brunch. Uh, any recommended face masks for keeping uh, your skin looking young? Well, face masks are a nice, um, you know, 
a nice thing to add to a skincare regimen, but I don't think they're going to be like transformative. So um, for me, skin masks are usually used for hydrating more than anything. I pretty much just use those to hydrate. Um, so hyaluronic acid mask and things like that. I um, have done some work with a company called Medicube and they do make some nice face masks. So you could look in, at them. I know there's a sustainability and a green uh, factor with face masks because there's a lot of packaging and things like that. And some people don't like it. Um, because you're like, you, there's a lot of waste and stuff with it. But I do like face masks, especially if my skin is feeling particularly dry and irritated and I kind of want to reset. Um, kidney failure can affect the skin. Uh, most commonly it causes itching and it can be really frustrating for people. So that's a great question. Um, and there are some experts actually treating itch in uh, patients with uh, kidney failure. A lot of pimples on the nose. Well, um, so how, how acne kind of works is, you know, um, our skin is one of the most sebaceous or it's like oily gland heavy areas on our body and acne bacteria loves oil. So if you're having excess oiliness and you got bacteria, you get a clogged pore, the bacteria kind of eats the oil and then it causes inflammation. So that's kind of the cascade of acne. Um, so that's a, a common reason you might have a lot in your nose. But another important thing to think about is if you're having these bumps on your nose that can look like acne, it's possible that you also have rosacea. So it's probably a good idea to see a dermatologist in person and just make sure that that's exactly what you're dealing with. Because if you had very isolated um, bumps on the nose, then it could be more due to that. And we got people checking in from the Philippines, Raven is. What do you recommend for broken capillaries? So I think actually there's nothing better than going and getting laser treatment done for that. Um, laser treatment is an awesome, awesome treatment for um, broken capillaries. Um, it can pretty much fade them away almost immediately. The results are permanent. So if anyone's dealing with redness or that, it's better to deal with that. Even early uh, post-inflammatory erythema, which Wynn is asking below. But otherwise, you could look at some products like Faded by Topicals, or you could look at um, Urban Skin RX. They make some nice products for helping to fade post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and post-inflammatory erythema. So that's the red marks and dark marks you get after, um, you know, after that, uh, after some type of like injury or irritation or, you know, like a pimple or a cut or something. So, uh, sunscreen to use every day. I heard tinted sunscreen is better. So Hannah is bringing up a great point. Um, so great uh, question, Hannah. So tinted sunscreen is better because tinted sunscreen not only has the sunscreen in the product, but it also has iron oxides. Iron oxides are the things that give the tinted sunscreen the appearance of being tinted. So why that's important is now because basically we now realize that like the blue light behind me and on, you know, on my computer screens and stuff like that, that we now know does influence hyperpigmentation. So this is something that wasn't known for a long time. We'd think if you just use sunscreen, you're fine, but we get a lot of other light exposure that can affect hyperpigmentation. So that's why it's so important to um, make sure to wear a tinted sunscreen. My favorite tinted sunscreen is Elta MD UV Clear. That's my favorite one. There are a lot of good ones out there. Color Science is another great brand, especially for people with really light skin tones, like redheads and stuff. The Color Science is a little bit more uh, light in color and it looks a little bit more natural. So that would be a good way to do it. Um, let's see. Definitely doesn't work for me because I'm breaking out again. Do I switch to Retin-A? Yeah, Shane, if you can get a, um, if you can get a, uh, you know, if you can get in and get a prescription, I mean, you definitely could switch to tretinoin. It'd be good. Targeted acne or age spot treatments. So um, laser pretty much. What color is the scrubs or brand? So this is figs. Um, figs are awesome scrubs. Love them. And um, I forget what the color is. Maybe it's camel. Maybe it's desert. Something of that nature. Lizzie, uh, okay, TikTok is getting uh, cre <laughs> creepy. I have psoriasis, so. Well, Green, you're in the right spot. TikTok has found you, and now here we are talking about psoriasis. So, yeah, TikTok, I think, knows a little too much sometimes, but I'm glad you made it here. So, all right, guys, if it's if all these things have been helping you, make sure to keep hitting those likes. We're up to 7,100 likes, so let's get to 10,000. Pop them, da -da 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 -da. hit them likes, hit them likes, hit them likes, and let's get this out to more people. Um, you know, there's about 80 people in the stream right now. That's awesome because um, hopefully everybody can benefit from this. And that's the whole reason I'm on TikTok. There's nothing I like more than being able to help people and then get some messages back saying, hey, you know, uh, you really helped me. My skin's changed forever. 
I, you know, and it's awesome, you know. I mean, I'm in the clinic every day helping patients, but it's nice to be able to reach so many people, you know. You can only see so many people in the clinic every day, so this is cool to at least help people with easy things that they can find over the counter that are safe and affordable and uh, get them started in the right in the right track. It doesn't mean you won't be able to, you know, you don't need to see a dermatologist or something, but it's good to have a place to start and then you know that you can go see your dermatologist if you if you haven't been uh, uh, if you aren't happy enough. So. Um, do you have any advice on broken? So we talked about the broken capillaries. Raven says I have the this toner AHA, BHA, PHA. It is fine if I put it next to hyaluronic acid serum. Yes, you can definitely do that. That's a nice combo. It may help decrease the irritation. Some creams actually like the uh, this Medicube. I just did a YouTube video on this, but this is the Medicube um, Zero Pore One Day Serum, and this actually um, has all those things in it, including hyaluronic acid. So. Yeah. Hey, no problem. Please always always mention that with psoriasis, people need to watch for joint issues later on. So that's an excellent point. I mean, a lot of people don't know that psoriasis can affect the joints. So that's really, really um, important to know. Psoriasis, you know, psoriatic arthritis is a, is a very real thing and it can be quite debilitating. And for years, we didn't have that good of treatments for it. But now we have amazing treatments. We have a lot of um, very effective treatments for psoriasis and for joints. Other new... Um, other new uh, information that's kind of come up with psoriasis is now we're realizing psoriasis just isn't a disease even of the skin and the joints, but rather like an inflammatory disease of like the entire body. So there's been a lot of look into like even the cardiovascular issues like strokes and heart attacks and people with psoriasis. So for those people, it's very important to exercise, eat a balanced diet and make sure you're, you know, achieving good control. We haven't really proven at this point that being on systemic or like oral or injectable psoriasis medicines decreases the risk of, you know, strokes and heart attacks and things like that. And, but, and also no smoking. So if you got psoriasis, definitely don't smoke super inflammatory and it doesn't help your stroke issue or the heart attack issue. So, yeah. So that's a great point. XOXO. You're awesome. Uh, thank you guys for all the follows. I appreciate it. I'm doing new videos like every day. So if you um, find these type of things helpful um, and you'd like to watch more like 15 second videos and, and that, uh, feel free to uh, follow me there on TikTok or on YouTube um, at Swollen D Skincare. Where can I find your recommendations? So, wow, Hector, so great question. So I actually have a link in my bio and the link, either you can go to my Amazon store if you prefer shopping on Amazon. I have things broken in by, um, by type there and then I also have a shop my shelf and um, shop my shelf is another thing where you can go there and you can buy uh, products um, that I recommend there. Um, Iron Girl, hey, what's up? Good to see you here, how you doing? And then Puna, hey, is there any specific kind of sunscreen you use every day? We talked about that. I'm always uh, peeling, peeling dry skin. So I would try some Vaseline uh, or Eucerner Aquaphor. Varicose veins, um, thank you so much for the uh, muting. Uh, varicose, uh, varicose veins, dermatologists treat. Some dermatologists treat, but a lot of term dermatologists don't. I'd say most dermatologists end up doing spider veins and stuff like that, but um, the varicose veins are a little bit bigger and sometimes people will see vascular surgeon for those. Um, broken capillaries in the face, just because it's been asked a few times. Again, uh, laser treatments, PDL treatments that target hemoglobin, which is in our blood vessels, is the best way to go. Best treatment for scalp dermatitis. Um, for that, you know, if someone comes into the clinic, usually they're going to end up, we're going to try to find out maybe what's causing the dermatitis, and we're probably going to provide a, a prescription for a topical steroid. Um, over the counter, you know, you're kind of limited because you kind of need something to calm the inflammation down. So the best thing you can really do is just try to avoid whatever's causing it. So um, best first step would probably be switching to a very gentle shampoo um, like the Free and Clear Shampoo by Vanacream. Is it appling good for anti-aging? It absolutely is. Sunflower, um, that was actually my last video I just did. Do we always have a, uh, to dry in between toes after showering, bathing, swimming to avoid athlete's foot? Well, it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't get athlete's foot, but it's probably a good practice if you're, you know, fungus and that loves kind of moist, humid environments. So um, that's that's some, yeah. What was my step one score? Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna reveal that. I think uh, Dr. Shaw revealed his, but. Um, I think we'll keep that keep that in the books, but I did I did good enough to get into dermatology, um, and my step two score was better. I'll say that. Let's see. 
So thank you guys again for the likes. Really appreciate it. If this is helping you, um, please feel free to pop the likes. There's a lot of questions. I almost kind of want to scroll down to the bottom and um, I'm going to maybe start with some of the more recent questions because I'm a little bit behind, about 100 behind. I don't know if those people are here, but hey, I'm going to scroll to the bottom and try to get to your questions. So drop some likes and let's keep this thing going. Tips for rosacea. Great question. So gentle skin care is one of the most important things you can do um, every single day. So switch to all gentle products. Vanacream is a great line. Make sure you're wearing sunscreen every single day. Know your triggers for rosacea because heat, spicy foods, uh, alcohol, those things can trigger rosacea along with UV light. If you're getting bumps for rosacea, then I think using something over the counter like azelaic acid is very important. Um, and you can get that for very affordably over the counter from like the ordinary. Um, it also comes in a prescription treatment, but it's a little more expensive. So um, what's your opinion about the ordinary ascorbic acid, um, arbutin? versus the vitamin C. So I think if you're dealing more with hyperpigmentation Lee, then you wanna probably use the one with alpha arbutin too. The, um, also the vitamin C 23% we talked about a little bit earlier, but it is pretty strong. It can be a little bit irritating and burn a little bit when you apply it. Dark elbows, you wanna be doing uh, amlactin for that. So amlactin is a gentle, um, amlactin is a gentle um, kind of chemically exfoliating moisturizer. So it comes from lactic acid, and that's a good option. Um, other companies make it, like Eucerin and stuff. So, uh, How long for something to fall off after a dermatologist sprays it with cold spray? I would say usually between one and two weeks. Calcium deposits, um, that one I would see a dermatologist about and just make sure you have the right um, thing because there's different things that can look like calcium deposits. There's thing called syringomas or... Um, you know, you could have milia, which are like almost like deep clogged pores. So I would see a dermatologist in person. Tips for dark melasma, sunscreen every single day. Two of the products I'm really liking right now is Faded by Topicals and Urban Skin RX. Um, those are both good. So tips for psoriasis. So natural sunlight can help psoriasis some. We actually treat people with sun. I don't encourage you to go out and get sunburn or lay in the sun or anything like that. But just so you know, again, all that healthy diet, you know, avoid alcohol, make sure you're not overweight. Those are some good tips for psoriasis. And then see your dermatologist. Best treatment for psoriasis on the feet. So depending on how debilitating it is, you know, the oral and systemic medicines work best for psoriasis. But usually we can use very strong steroids in the feet because the skin's really thick on the feet. So we can treat the psoriasis with really strong ointments. And um, you do have to kind of keep it up, but usually people can find a maintenance where they really knock it out for four weeks. And then after that, maybe they can use it three times a week and kind of keep things under control. So we're only 1,000 likes away from getting to 10,000. So if this is helping you, make sure to pop some likes. This gets it out to more people. That's how TikTok works. So if I'm helping you. Um, if I've answered your questions, smash a few likes there and uh, let's help get this out. Um, we're at 9.1 thousand. Let's get to 10,000. Uh, tips for psoriasis. Best treatment for psoriasis on the feet we talked about. Um, we talked about that. Acne and wrinkles. So there's one thing that's great for acne and wrinkles. Um, and that's adapalene. I did my last video on it. In my last video, I gave three great options. Acne Free is the cheapest one. I've recommended a ton of La Roche-Posay over the year I've been on TikTok and love it. I have both of them like right here with me. This is the Acne Free Adapalene. So this one is like less than 10 bucks and it's good for anti-aging and also good for acne. It's actually gonna help both of those things. It's probably the, it, it is the best thing you can get over the counter for acne. Um, and dermatologists, is, if you go see them, is basically just gonna prescribe you um, a stronger version of that most likely. So I use Tret and my lip and chin that wax, my skin came off of those wax area, worst pain. Yeah, that is honestly terrible. And I've been there with my eyebrows before. Um, it, it definitely sucks. So that's why we actually counsel people when they're on Accutane or using topical retinoids not to get their skin waxed. Um, really important not to do that because your skin is um, much more delicate uh, at that time. So you can actually um, rip your skin off. And then you can unfortunately be left with some hyperpigmentation. So we don't want that. Uh, good brand for sun protection, face cover, coolie bar is kind of pricey. So um, if you're talking about sunscreen, I would recommend Elta MD UV Clear. That's my favorite sunscreen. Uh, for the people that don't know, Cooley Bar um, is a company that makes a lot of sun protective and what they call UPF protective clothing. So hats with wide brims and things like that. I'm actually 
I, I know it's not stylish and I know it's not stylish because I was just down in Miami and I was thinking I'll probably see some people with these like UV protective face shields that are all shiny. They look like a welder's mask kind of. Um, I didn't see a single person in Miami with them, which I was kind of surprised about. But um, so, yep. So that would be another option is find one of those UV, UV protective uh, masks because that would be another good option for you. Yep, and it looks like Anna was uh, talking to Sue Z Baxter about uh, applying products, so that's good. I'm currently breaking out with hives. Antihistamines aren't working. What else can I do? So you got to see a dermatologist because honestly, we're going to use antihistamines at a much higher dose than um, most people would. So that's still you want to make sure you're maxing out those gentle, safe things. But there are some treatments that can be used depending on how often you're getting the hives and that. But you're going to have to have a, talk to a dermatologist about that toddler heat rash biggest thing is just avoiding the heat um, if you know the kids are super bundled up they're more likely to get it of course but there's really no treatment that you necessarily need to do it's really just kind of supportive for that eczema friendly products for the face I, Samantha I love Vanna cream uh, sunscreen strength for African American so I like SPF 30 for everybody at least um, if you got trouble with hyperpigmentation I'd be using something more like an SPF 50 so um, have I tried uh, uh, Biosance yet? I have not, um, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right, but I haven't tried it. I want to, I need to try it. Is there a specific kind of sunscreen to use every day? I've heard that tinted sunscreen is better. So we're kind of back up to the top here. What do you think about microneedling? So I like microneedling. It's it's kind of a, a less technically advanced way to to treat the skin um, than lasers. So it's basically literally a very physical. Thing. It's almost like a vibrating set of tiny needles that punctures the skin. And when our skin gets damaged like that, when it heals, it can stimulate new collagen formation. It can help decrease wrinkles. So um, it's good. You have to be a little bit careful if you have darker skin tones because you're more prone to hyperpigmentation. So that's something to know. Um, can you do peels while on Accutane? Definitely not. And, um, I, and I would not recommend having laser done during that time too. How much is laser treatment for acne scars? It totally depends, you know, um, but it's definitely in the, you know, you're going to be paying over $1,000 for a series of treatments for sure. Uh, Millie Grace just stumbled upon me and she needs me. Well, I'm happy to be here for you guys. I've been here uh, serving my, this noble, uh, noble, whatever, no, noble quest on TikTok, helping people get their best skin for the last year or so. Um, yeah. Let's see. I'm going to scroll back down to the bottom. Um, again, if you guys don't follow me on YouTube, you can check me out. Swollen D skincare there. Uh, Jeanette says, help. And I, I assume you've asked a question, uh, earlier. Um, let's see if I get back to it. Happy NYC. My skin is 10 times better because of you. I'm going to go ahead and screenshot that. That is like, well, that's a, that was a really bad screenshot of me though. Um, I'm going to go ahead and screenshot that because that's the reason I keep this going. I love helping you guys. It's awesome to hear that um, that you guys are getting great skin from this. So, Wrinkles, we talked about. Minoxidil, any other products? Um, so, I, you know, Minoxidil comes in many, many different forms. You know, you got solutions, you got foams, and all that. So, I would actually look at a different, um, different formulation of it. Um, because you may tolerate it okay. Um, there's not a lot of other great things over the counter. You know, some people are using like saw palmetto and stuff like that for hair loss, but the most proven thing really is minoxidil. Um, if you go see a dermatologist, you can potentially do PRP, platelet rich plasma, which has growth factors in it that's actually injected in your scalp. So there is a little bit of a, um, you know, a pain factor there, but that's a good option to do it. Hibiclens, antiseptic cleanser used daily as a body wash. A little bit much for your whole body. Um, you know, chlorhexidine is a strong antimicrobial, so probably not a, a great idea. But, um, but uh, you know, for people with um, some issues, whether it's like, you know, bad body odor or some issues with like hydradenitis suppurativa, which is kind of this inflam inflammation of hair follicles that happens in the groin and um in the armpits and stuff those people can benefit usually from an antimicrobial wash um is the perfect derma peel good for hyperpigmentation 
So I don't know about that particular one you're asking about, the perfect derma peel, but peels can be helpful for hyperpigmentation as long as they're not overly aggressive. And you want to have it done by an expert, so make sure you're seeing a dermatologist because you don't want to go to like a med spa or something like that. Lichen planus on joints. So I think maybe what you're saying is lichen planus is overlying the joints. Lichen planus doesn't really affect the body internally as much as on the skin. Um, so, but it can definitely come up on, um, you know, like over the elbow or over the knee. Um, but for that, we usually end up doing steroids or injectable or topical. Do you get more acne if you're expecting what products to use? It can go either way. You know, there's a lot of hormonal shifts during pregnancy and some people acne gets better and sometimes it gets worse. So it can go kind of either way. What products to use? You're kind of limited. Uh, really one of the, probably the best things you can continue to do is use um, azelaic acid. So azelaic acid you can get from the ordinary and that would be a good option for you. I love Elta MD. I have sensitive skin and the sunscreen does not cause issue, uh, skin to itch. Yeah, Elta MD is by far the, is the best thing that's out there. It's awesome. Best foundations with SPF for men. So, um, you know, if you're, you know, if you're, I don't know if you're applying, um, if you're applying makeup afterwards, but there's a really, really good thing I'd like for you to look into. And it's, um, it's called, um, oh, what, I'm trying to think of it. I've used it. Um, love it. It's a primer. Oh, it's Tizo. That's what it is. T-I-Z-O primer sunscreen. So I think it's like SPF 50, it's a primer, and I think that you'd really like that, and then you could do whatever else on top. Other makeup's gonna go on amazing, so after that. I use Dermapel Light to battle psoriasis, it helps a lot, awesome. Yeah, light therapy is one of the safest things that you can do for psoriasis, and it can be very effective. So, um, yeah. Can, can small pink bald spot be alopecia areata? It can sometimes if it's very early on. A lot of times it doesn't have really much pinkness to it, but it could be, but also it could be other things. So you got to see a dermatologist and make sure to get a good um, diagnosis on that. Doxycycline, great antibiotic that we use all the time in dermatology. What causes milia eye cream? So potentially if, a, if your eye cream is uh, comedogenic, meaning it blocks pores, it might be a little bit more prone to making milia, but... Um, but it, I mean, a lot of times people get them on their own, even without like some, you know, uh, some, uh, you know, particular application of something. Have you heard of Neostrata resurfacing glycolic lotion? So I have, I'm familiar with the brand Neostrata. I haven't used them in many years. Like probably the last time I was using them was back before I went to med school, but, um, they're all about glycolic acid and, um, that's a, it's a great brand. I mean, and glycolic acid has a ton of great, um, you know, benefits. So. Alrighty guys, let's um, let's uh, let's pony up and get these likes going again. Let's make sure this is reaching some people. So we're at twelve thousand. Let's just bop that up, double it up, and uh, get this out to more people. So I, I hope I've been helping you guys, um, and I love answering you guys' questions. You guys got more than I could ever ever uh, answer all in one go. But I try to do this about once a week. So. Thank you guys for the thank you guys for the likes. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for all the great questions. I know everyone's learning a lot, um, and I know some people are a little bit nervous about asking questions and stuff on here. So I appreciate the people that are doing it, and um, hopefully your questions um, have helped other people. Happy NYC says, "Oh my God, you are awesome." Well, thank you so much. I think you are awesome. Uh, does alcohol wipe help get rid of dark spot in the elbow and neck? Uh, Argy, not usually, but there is a condition basically where you, it's called like retention hyperkeratosis, which is almost like in a way like dirty skin or thickened up skin that's just not exfoliated. An alcohol wipe will remove that. Skincare for women over 40. So um, some of the best skincare for women over 40 basically would be using a great antioxidant serum in the morning. Vitamin C is a good option for that. I like either Vichy or Maylove, and then you want to use a great sunscreen like Elta MD, UV Clear. It's SPF 46, but as long as you're using something over 30, and then you want to use a retinoid at bedtime, and um, and, and so Adapalene's available over the counter. Um, HR Preston is asking about hydradenitis superativa solutions. So there's a lot of different things that can help this. It's a frustrating condition. Usually we hit it from multiple angles, to be honest with you. Um, not one single treatment's probably the best, but it kind of ranges from basically topical antimicrobials um, that are prescription or over-the-counter cleansers that decrease bacteria 
and that's kind of the first step we do oral antibiotics sometimes we give medicines that kind of block testosterone can, which can have effects on hair follicles um, so that can be some vitamin supplementation has been shown to help a little bit um, some people you know get laser hair removal which isn't like um, as amazing as it you would think it might be for hs um, laser treatments and then even surgery can be done for hs so there's a lot of different things out there depending on the severity and how um, w widely you know kind of distributed it is and how severe it is so that's a, a great question about hs really frustrating Dark under eye circles, really tough. You know, start with a good eye cream. The ordinary caffeine eye serum is like six dollars. If you want to um, spend some money, you know, you could try um, Neocutis, which is probably one of my favorite companies. Uh, Accutane a year ago, Barbie's asking about. Well, I hope you're able to complete that Accutane course. Some people do need an Accutane course repeated again. Unfortunately, it's very rare for someone to need three, but usually, uh, sometimes one or two. Um, if you're not using good acne topical treatment, sometimes people that couldn't control their acne before Accutane um, can control it with topical medicines after the fact. So that's, um, yeah, so that, I mean, that's, that is unfortunate, but I would get back on a benzoproxide wash and a dappling at bedtime and, and see how you do. Remember, it's going to take you about eight to 12 weeks to see how that's doing for you. Dark spots, lots of rays on the scaly scalp. So Jeanette, you got to see a dermatologist, make sure you know what you're dealing with. Um, a lot of things can cause that and um, they could just be age spots or it could be something else So you want to make sure you know Reagan. Thanks for the follow. I appreciate it hyaluronic acid cream um, Usually they're in serums But a lot of um, different moisturizing creams will have HA in it, too um, And is asking how the new job is the new job is great. So thanks so much. I uh, um, Yeah, I appreciate you asking. It's been good mostly admin stuff so far, but um, the um, in clinic tomorrow so i'm excited about it i can't wait let's see we talked about dark under eye circles love your info thanks for uh using your time with us well you're welcome cindy i'm happy to help let's see skincare for women over 40 we talked about that what works um what works on rosacea subtype one so um you know we don't necessarily divide them into subtype like one two three but there is you know a subtype where it's basically more redness and blood vessels um, and that's usually going to be best controlled by either topical products that constrict blood vessels which i don't like because they're expensive and they're very temporary or you can have laser treatments done which are actually going to help permanently reduce that redness if you're getting more bumps then you're talking more in the realm of anti-inflammatory antibiotics and topical treatments that are anti-inflammatory like azelaic acid Dark elbow solution. So Argy, uh, for that, you want to use amlactin. It's available over the counter. It's a good option. I hope that HR Preston, you saw my, uh, or got my talk about the HS that I gave. You're welcome, guys. Happy to help. Zell, Jesus loves me. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Anna, have I tried the new Perito sunscreen? I have not. Is it any good? I have lots of dark spots. I've never had anything sent to me from Perito. Thoughts on doxycycline? I like it. Um, it's you know sometimes we keep people on it for a while because it's it's such a good anti-inflammatory. People with um, with um, you know with either rosacea or hydradenitis sebativa since we've been talking about it or acne. You know they can stay on long term. You do have to eat with it. You can't take it with um, you know high calcium containing things. So because it kind of inactivates the medicine, it binds it up. Vanacream sunscreen, your thoughts? I love, I love Vanacream, great general skincare, so it's a good option. I'm glad they got a nice facial sunscreen out now. Dark spots on the elbows, we talked about that. Little blood vessel in the nose, laser treatment, taking care of this. Yes, absolutely, the best treatment for it. So uh, how long uh, term successful is hair transplant? It can be pretty much permanently successful, so it takes a while to set in. Um, but yeah, and then asking about Rocutane. So that's Rocutane overseas is is basically what Accutane or Isotretinoin is here in the States. It's a great treatment for acne. It's the best one that there is. So uh, let's see. Okay. Good firming cream for a 59 year old. So I think a lot of the things I, I had talked about with like adapalene and stuff like that, that's gonna be some of your best treatments to be honest. Um, you know, there are a lot of advertised firming creams out there that I, I don't, um, necessarily like really buy into, but, 
um, if you did want to look at one, Alaskan is a good company, and you could um, you could look into that. I'm in Southern Indiana. Dry skin on the lips. Um, I would start integrating like some good ointments like your Vaseline, Eucerin, Aquaphor. Skincare for uh, pubescent kids, male. I would probably just start with benzoyl peroxide cleanser in the morning. So CeraVe, 4% benzoyl peroxide cleanser. That would be a good, um, that would be a good option. You'll have your own huge famous clinic one day. Well, thank you so much, Happy NYC. I, I sure hope so. That'd be awesome. Uh, let's see. You will have yourself. Thank you. Best treatment for dry lips from Norway. So yeah, there's that. You probably also, I mean, once you get the dryness under control, if you're really having some texture issue on the lips, you could probably also find some good, um, you know, lip treatments with some alpha hydroxy acids in it that are going to help kind of smooth that out. So that would be another option for you too. You're welcome. I'm happy to help. Uh, happy to help, Argy. Um, small bump, on, small bumps on my forehead. Is it considered textured skin? You potentially could call it textured skin. So, um, but you know, just start basically with some gentle, like you, whether they're alpha hydroxy acids, like glycolic acid. Find something with that in it. May love make some nice glycolic acid night um, treatments. You could do something like that. Uh, husband took Accutane, it worked, but he was so dry all over. Yeah, so everyone who takes Accutane is going to be super dry. That's real common. Um, so, yeah, that happens. So thank you guys so much for the likes. That's awesome. Appreciate it. We've really reached a ton of people today. When uh, How TikTok works is basically the more you guys like the stream, the more people get shared to. And at one point, we were almost to 100 viewers, which was is great. It's uh, actually a lot more than I've had recently. So it's because of you guys and hitting the like. So I really appreciate it. Um, you guys have sent tons of flowers and uh, and likes and that. So we've reached a lot of people and it's been awesome helping you guys. So let's let's keep it going. How to lighten acne scars. So um, acne scars, if they're redness, sometimes a laser can be used and that's gonna remove the redness a little bit faster. But a lot of it is gonna be the tincture of time and protecting your skin from the sun. So a great sunscreen every single day, allowing time to fade that redness or dark marks. Um, other Treatments like Faded by Topicals um, is a combination cream that fights hyperpigmentation. It does not smell good. Another option would be using um, Urban Skin RX, which is a really good one. So, uh, Dr. Dan's Cordobom, that's an excellent suggestion. Um, AP, um, so thanks for dropping that in there. Dr. Dan's is a really, really good treatment. It's basically like a lip balm. I think it also has a sunscreen in it, if I remember. And then it has like a 1% hydrocortisone, so a little bit of a calming steroid. So, that's a nice option. Um, acne, um, so my favorite acne uh, treatments uh, are basically, um, I'll see if I can drop them in the chat here. Yeah, it's actually, it limits me. I can't, I can't put anything that, that big. So um, yeah, so uh, acne, basically this, uh, you know, this uh, CeraVe 4% benzoyl peroxide cleanser in the morning and then adapalene at bedtime. And you can get the adapalene from acne free um, makes an adapalene or you can get La Roche Posay adapalene. Um, either way, that's available over the counter. Take about eight to 12 weeks to start working real well. So, uh, thoughts on photon laser treatment. So, I haven't used that particular laser, but it's always a good idea if you're interested in lasers to go see somebody in person. Make sure that um, you have an accurate diagnosis of what you got going on. They can tell you what they have access to or if they, if they don't have it who you could see maybe to get um, the treatments you're needing. So um, recommended product for Dapplin again. So I did show it, but this is it. It's called acne free. If you want the name of it, just check my last TikTok video. I, it was included in my last TikTok video. So you can do that. Um, microblading and eyebrows. Is that safe? And is it possible negative outcomes for doing it over and over? Well, it is a form of basically tattooing. So it definitely can have the effect of just not not being a good result uh essentially so that's an issue if it's gone over and over again sometimes the ink can spread and then if the ink spreads then it can not look as good um, as well um, a lot of times we see with tattoo inks and stuff if they're contaminated sometimes people can get infected sometimes people can have allergy to it so those are some of the things that can happen so there's definitely not without risk but it can have really nice results if you go to somebody who knows what they're doing 
chin and lower lip still numb six months after jaw surgery. So sorry to hear that. But yeah, sometimes those nerves can be um, interrupted and sometimes they get better and sometimes it doesn't get, um, it doesn't get better. Um, and you may be, you know, dealing with numbness. The Murad eye serum, I actually haven't used either. So yeah, so let me go down, but I do love the Murad products. I mean, Murad just came out with a really cool product. I did a video on this too, but this is Murad daily clarifying peel. So look at this. So it's got literally an oil based, basically substance up top. Okay. This is basically like um, your BHA, okay? Your alpha hydroxy acid is on the bottom. You can kind of like literally see, it's like literally divided. Um, show YouTube too here. So um, it's really cool, but you basically shake it up and you can actually use this. This is, a, this is an AHA, BHA, and a retinoid in one product. So everywhere on TikTok, you're like, you can't use these together, rotate them and all that. But they've made a product that essentially is um is a is a nice combination of all three of these things so um couldn't really get easier than that um i did use it you know i can see i used some of it there i need to keep using it a little bit but i love it it's it's awesome i think it's a great combination product for people uh, polish choice has never sent me pr um to this point so that would be cool though uh paris hilton has a great skincare line okay well i have to check it out maybe i'll roast it i don't know no it's probably good so but yeah, hey, you guys have been awesome. You know what? I appreciate the likes. I appreciate the follows. I appreciate helping you guys get your best skin. Um, video, video next week on YouTube is titled Don't Ruin Your Skin. So um, it kind of is a take on an interview I did um, with um, a magazine called In The Know or like an online you know, publisher called In The Know. So it's a little bit of that type of information. So, um, thank you guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's, I think, uh, Anna, that the celebrities doing skincare is a bit of a money grab and it's kind of surprising cause it's like, man, they, they're already making so much dough. Is it, uh, uh, you know, is it really necessary for them to make a skincare line? It'd be kind of fun to just kind of compile a bunch of these different, uh, lines and kind of go through them or compare them or something that would be kind of cool what's my youtube channel um it is swole md skincare if you just look up swole md skincare it should pop right up for you unfortunately there's not a cure um um there is not a uh cure for neurofibromatosis what days and hours do i do live so um it's kind of variable it's been kind of sporadic lately i was previously doing it on Sundays at noon Eastern, and that's kind of when we did it today. So that's pretty much what I'd be, you know, what I'd be doing. I'm gonna try to do that, be better about getting it scheduled. I'm still trying to figure out really when I'm gonna roll out the new YouTube videos too. So, but anyway, hey, I appreciate you guys again. Thank you so much. You guys have been awesome today. It's been a great skincare Q and A brunch. Um, so thank you so much, and I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome uh, week coming up. And make sure, you know, if you got questions, feel free to drop them in the comments of the videos. I try to get to as many as I can of that. So it's good seeing y'all and um, I'll talk to y'all soon. Take care now.